morning, everybody. Uh, we're going to start with a public uh, comment section for anything that is not coming up later tonight for the two hearings that we have in front of us. So does anybody uh, in the crowd have anything to say uh, that does not relate specifically to uh, the two hearings ahead? If you do, just raise your hand. No? All right. With that said, we're going to start. We're going to jump into our first hearing scheduled for 7 o'clock, and it is to amend the zoning ordinance section 350-2.1, 8.1, 11.2, and 11.6 to regulate the medical marijuana dispensaries and grow operations and to amend the zoning ordinance to ensure traffic mitigation and address specific project fact-based analysis. This is a joint um, hearing with the Planning Board and the Ordinance Committee. Uh, we're going to start with Carolyn, you're going to walk us through on some changes that were made from the last time we saw these? Um, yes. Um, so, well, first of all, let me just clarify. Um, um, <laughs> that um, this was a, the last time that you saw this, um, was in draft form before it went to City Council. So um, you looked at some language, um, and I think uh, I'll just um, briefly go over. I think the biggest questions for you all, which at some point, if, if you want me to um, go through the ordinance and describe the whole thing, I will. But I just um, wanted to emphasize that there were a couple of changes that you were concerned about, or the biggest thing I think was the issue about grow lights and energy consumption, whether or not that should be included. So there was one, um, since the time that you looked at, at that in draft form, um, staff um, sent it forward to council with um, a provision that we'll go over in more detail um, in a bit that um, uh, focuses on the energy production or energy use and offsetting that energy use just for grow lights in particular and not for any other energy that might be consumed on that site by office uses or any other aspects of the business to try to get at what the board um, was concerned about before it went to City Council. So that was probably the biggest issue I think I remember from when you all discussed it in draft form. So now what's happened is it went to City Council and that was just a, I think it was the September meeting that you guys talked about this. This is sort of on a fast track because the state is um, in position to license these uh, by the end of the year. So if there isn't any regulation on the books by the time they get licensed then essentially there's um, would be grandfathering so we want to make sure that there's something in place um, ahead of when the state does the licensing so the idea was to get this in front of City Council and get back and have a public hearing about it um, you know fairly quickly so it went to City Council um, early October and then was referred out for ordinance um, uh, planning board and uh, Board of Health and uh, Board of Health met earlier this week and, and um, some of the comments, some of the law, some of the changes in this ordinance actually that you have in front of you are also adjustments and tweaks that have been made since it was introduced to council in early October. So that's why there's two color patterns on your um, version that you were emailed because it represents the original um, ordinance package that was sent to city council plus some adjustments that have happened since then with um, staff conversation between you know our Office of Planning and Sustainability and Board of Health. Um, so basically I'll run through the ordinance and the contents and then um, um, certainly try to answer any questions that you may have uh, before you open it up. So <clears throat> the idea behind this ordinance is to create a definition for medical marijuana. So the first section of this um, proposed ordinance is to insert a definition for medical marijuana into our definition section of the zoning instead of creating a separate line item in the table of use that's just for medical marijuana because in um, for the most part it's it's broken into two components. It's either a manufacturing piece or a retail component for the dispensary piece of it. 
Um, so it really doesn't need a separate use classification. It really just needs to be defined so it's clear what we're talking about when, if someone, when a proponent comes forward. So um, under uh, definitions, there would be a new definition for medical marijuana that would um, define the treatment centers, dispensary, and growing and processing processing and refer back to the um, state statutes uh, that regulate the bulk of these dispensaries. Um, and um, um, then create off-site parking requirements for, for this type of use by creating a sort of uh, lumping it in with medical and dental offices because that's sort of the most intense parking um, requirement that we have in the zoning ordinance and um, from what we understand dispensaries and the like will really could potentially generate as much traffic as a doctor's office which is on the higher end of, of impacts um, to the to the city and the demand for parking um, and then further in the site plan review um, uh, section there's a, a trigger for establishment of a med medical marijuana facility so if it's a grow operation dispensary or combined facility with a medical um, practice that would trigger site plan approval by the planning board and then within the site plan approval criteria a section that um, creates um, review specifically as it relates to uh, medical marijuana facilities also in this package, though, is more specificity, um, and that's the other part of this hearing, is more specificity about um, traffic mitigation and how traffic mitigation is calculated, and in particular how it would be calculated for this type of operation, which tends to generate much more vo um, higher volumes um, than lots of other uses. And so there are some districts in which we have retail operations that are allowed um, without triggering traffic mitigation and since this is really probably going to be a much higher generating use the idea is even though in those districts where s some retail establishments don't need to um, improve or make traffic mitigation um, improvements that this would be a use that um, shouldn't be exempted from that so that's the idea behind um, those changes <coughs> And so spelling out that it would be um, uh, mitigation for any mar a medical marijuana project, regardless of the district, would be $2,000 per peak trip. And um, then what the, um, how many peak trips per square feet is assumed by that. It would be um, consistent um, with um, other um, high volume uses like other personal services and retail in the highway business district. Um, and then find also in the site plan approval criteria, uh, there's specific criteria that relates to medical marijuana operations. So I think it probably makes sense for me to read through those um, criteria if you'll, um, so that everyone who's here and present or happens to review the tape um, will see that. So. Review criteria uh, would fall under 11.6F. Um, uh, medical marijuana operations shall meet the following criteria. A, hours of operation for any sale to the public and any distribution and delivery of marijuana shall be limited to 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. All aspects of the use or facility slash facility relative to the acquisition, cultivation, possession, processing, sales, distribution, dispensing, or administration of marijuana products containing marijuana, related supplies, or educational materials must take place at a fixed location within a fully enclosed building and shall not be visible from the exterior of the business. Building facades and property must be consistent with the character of the neighborhood, including such items as transparent storefront windows with a view into the interior of the building. Carolyn, yep. how does that mesh with the business about you can't see inside of it? So the idea is wherever, 
to, to make sure that the um, use of um, and the sales or the distribution or, or cultivation or the processing is not visible, but other aspects of the facility could be visible. So if there's, uh, there's sales of other things in the store or if there are other things going on like you, um, you got to take it to the back room. <laughs> yeah, or so you might you have it see in the building. I mean, is that right. what we're doing? We're right. saying it's two parts. Right. You have to be able to see in the front right. part, but you can't see exactly. in the back room, right. as it were. Right. Because we don't want to create blank walls no, I along pedestrian. That, but it just seemed inconsistent. <clears throat> right. Mm -hmm. The idea is exactly that. So, so where you're having those, where the sales are, or where there's any kind of dispensing or production that's not what's front and center on the street mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. other aspects of the facility should be you know you shouldn't you should have um, glazing along the street and be able to have sort of that um, pedestrian interaction on the street in terms of visibility and so you're not creating these blank walls and it's similar to the requirements we have for um, <clears throat> adult establishments um, but not pharmacies <clears throat> right mm -hmm. right so we are treating them differently from pharmacies. From other medical dispensing right. locations. Yeah, why are we treating them like porn shops and not pharmacies? Um, <clears throat> I think there was, um, I think there's a concern that because there's still, um, because there are, other op there are other pieces of the operation that um, are deemed not to be, they don't have the st same legality, I guess, as other drug sales and things like that. So we're necessarily sort of in this middle shady ground, I guess I would say. Partway legal, partway not. Um, and well, well, wait a minute before we leave that. Yep. Are we saying then that we are going to allow things that are not legal. I mean, I'm, I'm still not. <laughs> <laughs> it's the way the state has established it, essentially. They're, you know, they're, they're not pharmacies, even though they really are at their base. I would say, I would argue they are like pharmacies. But the way this, the, the statute is structured is they're still not treated the same as any other pharmacy that sells, you know, drugs that are not over-the-counter drugs. So is there statutory language that requires this um, protection or? I need to, I don't recall. I know that there are experts in the public that could probably tell me that right offhand. I've got the criteria right here. And um, there's all sorts of. And those are, know, those are state true. criteria, yeah. not, and we can't, right. and there's, we don't have a latitude on those locally. Or if that's I, or a state criteria. Right, that's what I was asking. Yeah, um, let me take a minute and run through that and we'll um, um, Sorry, I think just I confirm. Um, so then sort of going to D, um, uh, buildings must be ventilated with filters or scrubbers to ensure that there are no odors from marijuana in any place where the public or clients are present and no public exposure to any pesticides or herbicides or other chemicals. Uh, because of the high E, because of the high electricity use, all reasonably projected electric use from grow lights must be offset by an equivalent amount of on-site or off-site renewable energy generation. Um, F, no medical marijuana dispensary and or treatment center shall be located within 500 feet of any preschool, elementary school, middle school, high school, college or university, or a city active recreation facility, i.e. Agnes Fox Fields, Arcanum Field, Ellerbrook Field, Florence Fields, Main Field, Mains Field, Sheldon Field, Veterans Field, and Look Park. No medical marijuana dispensary and or treatment center shall be located within 2,000 feet of any other such dispensary and or treatment center. Cheryl? Then mm -hmm. this may be kind of the same top principle that we were talking about with yep. earlier, but so it can't be. It can be 500 feet within a school or a park, and I will note that Child's Park is not listed as a <coughs> prohibited area because it's not a city park. But it's still a park. Right. But it's got to be 2,000 feet away from another dispensary. Well, high school will take care of most of it. Well, that's my somewhat my point. So it could be within 500 feet of the high school, 
but it can't be within 2,000 feet no, of it can't a competing be within, dispensary. It can't be within 500 feet of the high school. Well, but that's not that far. But it has to be at least 2,000 feet away from another dispensary. I mean, it, right. those things seem to be, those things right. seem to me, those things seem to be reversed. They should be reversed or to some extent. Well, I, I don't know if they would be reversed. I think 2,000 feet is quite long, and I think that became quite far. I mean, that's almost half a mile. Um, and so if you think about, you know, ac accessibility to these facilities by people who um, might be walking, that's, uh, you know, the f to, that's almost as far as you'd walk. I mean, if you're, you're you know, we, we think of um, the walking distance, the comfortable walking distance is half a mile to three quarters of a mile from, you know, in town or through neighborhoods is a comfortable distance. So it is, I would say, yes, that figure is, is extreme. I wouldn't say 500 feet necessarily. Um, I wouldn't think it was extreme. It was in F. If the, if the numbers in F and G were reversed, I'd think it'd be a lot more amenable. But you wouldn't want dispensaries 500 feet apart from each other. So well, that wouldn't bother me as much as if they're 500 feet from a school or a park. Right. right. I mean, that's my. But on the other hand, we don't where I mean, these are allowed. 500 feet probably from each other. Right. These and, days. And, <laughs> and we also have. I mean, the other piece of it is there aren't a lot of commercial districts that are that close to schools, so I'm not sure that um, you know you wouldn't be able to locate a dispensary in or next to Child's Park. I mean, there's a little piece up by Cooley Dickinson that's business. But that's also a hospital and a medical, you know, so that might, um, so I don't, I think that, um, you know, if for the most part, schools are pretty far away from the commercial districts. I'm just sort of going through my head where they're, um, you know, Bridge Street School is close to um, yeah. um, Main Street um, and potentially Jackson Street. being applied to some other rules around schools? Yes, and in the statute, the statutory language for this, um, there is a provision that if the local jurisdiction doesn't create um, um, measures or address um, any kind of regulations for medical marijuana, then sort of the default would be 500 feet. Okay. okay. Question about would, would the, is Cooley Dickinson quite likely could become a dispenser? Um, dispensing facility is that 500 feet from the high school or from Smith Hope? Yeah, not Smith Hope. Not Smith Hope, yeah. 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 So they they wouldn't be able to, I mean, they wouldn't be able to dispense marijuana in the hospital. They couldn't anyway, right? Because just, be just Coke. Pardon? <laughs> just Coke products. What's that? Just cocaine based products. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Right. I mean, it's, the state, it's the statutory requirement is 500 minimum. So right. well, that's only if your jurisdiction doesn't create. Oh, you could create. Sorry, I'm reading right. that wrong. So mm -hmm. we could create something. The way the right. statute right. reads is shall the RM the uh, medical dispensary shall um, comply with all local requirements regarding siting, providing, however, that if no local requirements exist. The facility shall not be sited within a radius of 500 feet of a school daycare center. Got it. Sorry. Yeah. So Cooley Dickinson is grandfathered in. Well, nothing's grandfathered at this point. <laughs> oh, no, I don't for being a hospital. For, 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 for uh, morphine and so on. Yeah. I think I'd like I'll to know what the reasoning is behind the, around the 2,000 foot. Why do we care whether how close together the dispensaries are? I, it's a question for you guys to debate. I mean, I think it came from um, trying to create a compromise. I think actually, since I wasn't working on the compromise, I'll, I'll default. Um, I think that um, between our office and Board of Health, um, Board of Health had some concerns about separation of facilities, and I think the 2000 came from them, but you can certainly call on the Director of Health to ask where that number came from, but it's, it was I'm asking here. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 but she's here. Oh, so okay. during the public comment, you okay. can ask. Um, but I don't, it's certainly a number to be debated. I mean, as all of the provisions in this ordinance are to be debated. Um, but yes, it's a far distance. I would, I would agree. Yep. I, I agree. Just for question. I don't, I don't see how that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I understand we can get to that later. Seems more open. 
Um, H. H. All medical marijuana facilities shall be designed to avoid being attractive to or marketing to minors. And I, any dispensary and or treatment center shall maximize potential for transit access. That came as a recommendation out of um, Board of Health discussion. How, 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 how is a dispensary supposed to comply with that? With? Um, I. Maximum. Well, I think it's a it, it, to the extent practical. So, if some if a dispensary comes in for a permit from the planning board, you know, a beneficial criteria might be, oh, you're actually on a bus line or you're within walking distance of getting service. But it's not required. So it's just sort of advisory. I guess if it's not required, then um, if it's not really anything that can be mandated, I'm not sure. If it, it sounds like it's aspirational. I'm not sure if it makes sense. Being in an ordinance if it's something okay. that's really aspirational. Yep. Yeah, that'd be tough to enforce to maximize potential. Yep. Can you give me an example of that? They have to make a door that's closer to the bus stop. <laughs> it's very <Yeah>. good. <laughs> Thank you. Badly written. Yeah. But I want to get back to B and C. <clears throat> I agree with Ann's being puzzled about. I don't see how you could possibly qualify for both B and C. If the dispensaries are for the sale, distribution, and dispensing of marijuana, mm -hmm. which you can't see according to B, but you have to see according to C. I don't. I don't understand. Well, it's really about. I mean, the actual sales location could very well be a small portion of what else is happening in that facility so the whole the whole um, the whole site you know if you have a 10,000 square foot building and in the back you're doing growing and in the middle you're doing the sales and in the front you have some other activities going on if you've got some classes or something else that's going on at the front of the building the idea is that you know where you're changing money <laughs> for this is not visible I don't understand why. <sighs> I don't okay. understand why. I understand if it's an existing facility, like a pharmacy, which is where the stuff should be sold. Sorry, I'm concerned. I mean, all of this is sort of unnecessary. But if, let's just say that it's a standalone uh, pot shop, uh, how would you envision having sales distribution dispensing not being visible and also having the interior visible? I mean, are you going to have a partition so that <clears throat> you could have a what, yeah. silver crosses from one <laughs> palm to the other? You know, nobody can see it. <laughs> you, I mean, yes. I think um, one obvious scenario would be to have a partition. Um, you could, or you, it, you know, I mean, you could establish your the the floor area could be set up in a way that you have different functions going on in different parts. So. You know, um, let's take CVS, for example. The pharmacy is in the rear. You don't see anybody going up and necessarily getting their drugs being dispensed from the front of the store. They've got other sales stuff going on in the front. But that's just because they want to force you to walk all the way through the store to buy something else. <laughs> that's got nothing to do with that. That's why the milk is in the back of the grocery store. So. <laughs> the marketing well, genius. I, when I walk past, if, if I drive past the porn store without stopping, of course, and I see somebody walk in there. Am I not supposed to know what they're doing in there? Somehow, some, you know. This is a that's, that's different, though. That you can't see. You can't physically see in from the street, from the right. exterior. You can't see in the building. This is saying you can see in the building. Yeah. You just can't see the transactions, which just might just mean there's a there's a partition or something, half wall partition. Yeah, in but the middle if, the, if I'm walk, if I'm driving past my my analogy, if I'm driving past the pot store. And I see somebody walk in there. I know they're not going to go in there, you know, to get their shoes shined. I mean, it, it seems a little bit like we had the conversation last time about the, the electricity um, penalty or prohibition that we're, you know, we're saying you can do this, but we're placing a burden, uh, you know, kind of a, a selective burden. If you, I mean, we. 
we're saying that we want you to do this, but then we're saying, it, but you have to meet these particular criteria that only you have to meet. And I guess it seems like the conversation we had about the, the electricity usage and that it, it seems punitive in a way, as opposed to protective. I don't know, I'm, I don't know if that's the right use of the words, but I just, it seems like it's very similar to that conversation we had, that yeah. we're placing a particular burden on a particular use, mm -hmm. which we're saying we will allow, but only under some very particular criteria. I think the punitive part is not allowing them to use the sun to grow the marijuana. Well, that's a different. Which is <laughs> solar power at its best. So. Well, the zoning ordinance that. isn't requiring them to do that. Um, it's, hmm? that it's the zoning ordinance isn't requiring that. It's that the way they're being licensed at the state is they have to be up and running very quickly, and that doesn't give time to build greenhouse facilities. At that last meeting, you said that we wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to have greenhouses. Well, be, because it's a timing issue. Oh. <coughs> Jan, did you have a question? Um, actually, it was a comment. Do you want me to hold it until we? No. Okay. No, I mean, just to, more to this point. I think last time we met, we I think we were all in agreement that this is most like a pharmacy, and so I feel like we should. Uh, that's where I'm. That's what I'm keeping in my mind while I'm reading through these. Uh, proposed um, regulations and that's I think why I'm having so much trouble with this one about all this uh, all this confusion about what has to be um, hidden and what doesn't like that doesn't make sense to me if we're thinking about it consistent with a pharmacy um, and I feel the same way about um, H um, I mean first of all I think it's so vague I don't know how you could possibly interpret that um, but also I think um, Again, I mean, I think we're, we're, this ordinance seems to suggest that the pot shop, as Franti would call it, is more like a porn shop than a pharmacy, and I don't agree with that. So I don't want the zoning to reflect that. Mm -hmm. okay. It's almost as if the state wants to make it, feels it has to make it legal, legal but wants to make it as hard as possible or as right. much shame associated with it as possible right and I of course we have to be consistent with the statutory requirements but to the extent that that these things are not required I would not support putting them in there right make them requirements right okay any other questions in the board before we open this up to the public I'm curious to get some public comments okay anyone from the public had yep come on up uh, just state your name and address from there. Yeah, um, I have a couple of comments, but the, the, the one that I wanted to just do first, um, I, I'm with Arnon Vered, who's uh, an applicant of New England treatment uh, alternatives um, for a license. Um, the, the question is that preschool is now in the um, ordinance, and I had two questions about that. Uh, what do you call a preschool? Because we have an awful lot of uh, daycares and small other little daycare facilities that call themselves preschools. Um, and uh, it, it might be a little problematic in locating where those are sometimes. They are licensed, so I suppose you could get a map. But they do dot the city. Uh, and I don't know of any preschoolers who sort of walk to work by themselves or anything. I mean, they're all being by their parents mm -hmm. so I, I the state did not insert that you put it in your ordinance so I wanted you to have some consideration of whether that's a critical sort of issue to have in the ordinance and also the question of whether if it's a site plan criteria it's a waivable criteria um, that the Planning Board can then consider depending on the location um, if you need to have it in there for some compelling reason um, <coughs> as opposed to relying on what the state regulation is, which is just schools, um, that you consider that issue as to whether or not as a site plan criteria, it's a waivable criteria if you want to have it in. Because you could evaluate it if something's 480 feet away and it's a, you know, three or four kids in a preschool. So that is one comment I have to, to raise first. Okay, okay. thanks. <coughs> yep, in the back. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a physician in Northampton. I have 600 medical marijuana patients in my practice. Um, and 
what I hear when you're speaking about the storefront issue, I think you're thinking of a, a 25 year old Rasta guy or something. I'm not really, I'm not really understanding where you're coming from with this storefront issue. So what I would like to tell you is what the typical medical marijuana patient is. They do not ride a bus because they are so debilitated. They are older. Um, to have them walk into a place that would be similar to say the sex stop shop down on King Street, I really think is an insult. Um, it will marginalize them so much. There is so much shame around people using marijuana right now. People are so afraid. To have a 70 or an 80 or a 90 year old, which I have plenty in my practice, um, go into a place that's storefronted the way you're suggesting, I just think would be really sad. So that's what I have to say. Thank you. Yep. Hi, everyone. I'm Meredith O'Leary. I'm the public health director for the city. And I'm hoping that I can answer some of the questions that you raised up here tonight. Um, I took notes, so I'll do my best. So um, first of all, the, the uh, medical marijuana regulations by the state are the minimum standards. You can be more restrictive, but you cannot be less restrictive, as we all know. So that does answer a lot of the questions that you brought forward. So if we just want to go down the list, and I don't know if any of you have even looked at the state regulations, but if not, I brought them with me. Um, let's talk about, let's see, B. You had questions about not being able to see or everything having to be done behind a, a closed door. Well, the regulation states that, let me just go to the page, I'm sorry. Marijuana, MIPs, which is food that's infused with marijuana, and associated products shall not be displayed or clearly visible to a person from the exterior of a dispensary. So any sale, any transaction, or any um, marijuana itself, or food products infused with marijuana, cannot be seen from the exterior of the building. So I think that's why it's written into the ordinance as such. Because again, these are the minimum standards by the state. Um, I'm sorry, before you leave that, yep. but that doesn't seem to mention the actual transaction. Okay. Um, I'm trying to highlight as I, as I go. Let me see. I believe there is something about the transaction in here, component in here, and I ha I'd have to reread this and I can get back to you with where it is in, in the statute. But what section were you just reading from? Page 33. Well, it might be different. K is patient education. Marketing and advertising requirements. Number six. And a dispensary is only allowed to sell marijuana products, so it's not like you know, a CVS or a Walmart, you're going to have other products in there. It's only marijuana products that they can have in there. I think someone had brought that up, too. Um, Do you hear that? that let's right? go down to the 500 feet requirement. So just yep. before you leave that mm -hmm. point, so these will not be head shops? No, no. It can okay. only be marijuana mm -hmm. and marijuana-infused products. You cannot have rolling papers or what have you well then i don't know that seems to go against the earlier discussion around well you you could have something going on in the shop yeah, and then the but you could have the other per, i mean it sounds like the only thing going on in the shop is marijuana right that's so it. okay how would may i ask yes yeah, yeah. how would you envision selling marijuana in a pharmacy, which is where it should be sold in the first place. Well, I agree with you, but it can't be done because of the class of the drug that it is. Oh, my God. I, I'm sorry. I didn't write the regulation. I'm just helping you interpret <laughs> <laughs> Don't so, kill the messenger. So, so, 
Okay, so if you had a, I mean, I'm thinking of a storefront on Main Street. Mm -hmm. It's accessible, it's on the bus line. Mm -hmm. So if someone had a storefront, the Mountain Goat site is currently empty, mm -hmm. I think, and they had some type of window display that you could not see through, mm -hmm. but then when you went in the store, it was just open, would that? That would be okay because anyone in the store has a, a card. Those are the only people that are allowed into the dispensary. They have a medical marijuana card. No one else can go into the dispensary. Okay. So it can't be visible from outside. Mm -hmm. Once you have your card, you go in, mm -hmm. then it can just be open. Including the transaction. Well, no, the marijuana has to be under. I mean, there's there's stipulations right. of the regulation, right? Okay. Right. The, but I'm, I'm thinking more about the activity and the, mm -hmm. you know, okay. And since that's the only thing going on, that's it. There don't. I'm, I was. There don't need to be different parts of the store. Nope. Okay. Mm -mm. All right. Mm -mm. But if your if your zoning regulation is stating that you have to have a transparent window front, then the um, the the business owner of the dispensary is going to have to have figure out a way to be able to have the marijuana where it's not visible from outside. So if that's what you're requiring, that's what they're up against. Which would Jen. be similar to an adult store. That's right. right. You put pictures right. of something else up right. and pretend that it has some relationship to what's inside, but not close enough that you know what it is or something. Right. So it seems like that, that part of the statute runs contrary to what our goal of trying to keep you know, at least downtown areas vibrant by having, you know, open windows. And I mean, this is, I feel like this is problematic, especially for like the, the downtown where it is going to be like the porn shop where it's weird and uninviting and it's gross and right. yeah. Um, and it, it's like a place that you don't want to walk by. But I think what I'm hearing is that we don't have any control over that's state that requirement. That's a minimum requirement. It. If it were, if so it were in something like a house, it, there would be small windows. They would be higher, and you wouldn't have necessarily that same kind of right. of issue. Right. What was a it se seems like what was added by ordinance, what was suggested to be added, is that building facades and property must be consistent with the character of the neighborhood, including such items as transparent storefront windows with a view into the interior. That was added because what was there seemed to indicate that you could end up with just a blank wall. But it's that, so it, I think though that runs, I think C runs afoul of the statutory language because it says um, uh, transparent storefront windows with a view into the interior of the build, building. I think I understand the statute to require no view into the building, right? I'm not no, no, it's, it's no view of marijuana, marijuana from marijuana the exterior. Products, right, right. For sale, right. But okay. there's nothing else. To that's view. what. What else is there to view? There's nothing right. else and to again, view. And again, sale. I'll have to before we use that word, sale of. Um, let me refer to the regulation and get back to you on that. But I mean, so you could have you could have two extremes. One would be like faces, where they always have a display. Mm -hmm. You can't see past it. You don't know what's going on back there, but it's a beautiful display. And the other right. would be the the porn shop across from Dunkin' Donuts, which right. Right. is not what you want. You know, on Main Street. Except, uh, how do you, Mr. Chair, I regulate these them? were only in industrial zones. No. no growing growing. Yeah. Yeah. Growing yeah. Only yeah. Only yeah. Dispensary dispensaries. Dispensaries. Yes. Right. But, but I think the distinction, say, use the two stores, that, the locations you just mentioned, faces has, you know, in a sense, has exactly what is being described except it's allowed to use it to promote and invite people into its store, from a, and it's a marketing tool, where I think the ordinance says no exactly marketing. the opposite. Yeah. You can't do that. You can't, you can't display them. marijuana. You can't display your products. You can, I mean, it's exactly the opposite. So it does seem like it becomes, I don't know, an art display, you know, mm -hmm. something, right. yeah. but not related to what, you know, never mind right. that man behind <laughs> the curtain kind of thing. You can't even have any kind of signs that refer to healthcare or RX symbols like pharmacies do, the way that the regulation is written. Can you put up a sign? Or do you say, hey, we ain't selling nothing here? <laughs> <laughs> you can do that. <laughs> you could list all the things you don't sell. And then <laughs> <laughs> it's a big sign. <laughs> well, now, I, I guess I want to go back because I'm not sure it's so um, clearly distinct that you can only do this in, this in the facility because we've had conversations with prospective 
um, license holders who want to run classes or run yoga studios in the same facility and do other things. And there is a provision here, it does say, the um, facility shall not produce any items for sale or promotional gifts such as t-shirts or novelty items bearing a symbol of or references to marijuana, um, including the logo of the RMD. But you know, I, I don't, I don't see how that says you can't sell yoga mats because you know that work with you know, that are extra padded or whatever to help the people, the patients who are coming in. So I'm not sure that that necessarily restricts what else you can do in the facility. So you can't sell bongs. Um, that would be referential, I think, to marijuana. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Thank. <laughs> but you have to go down the street for that. I'm sorry, Meredith. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, is it okay if I call you Mary? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, but I thought, I thought you said that the only thing that can be sold. That's my understanding. So yoga mats could not be sold. No. I don't know that we have the same interpretation. Right. Oh, okay. This is what I'm saying. All right, let's forge ahead. On, on, <laughs> well, why don't you read the section where you think it prohibits it? Do you know? I would actually, I have to, it's, uh, this document's about 90 pages. And I I, I'm looking at section L, marketing and advertising requirements. Yep, mm -hmm. And um, mine isn't, I don't have page numbers. Mm -hmm. so it doesn't, but it says, you know, number seven says, an RMD shall not produce any items for sale or promotional gifts, such as t-shirts or novelty items bearing a symbol of or references to marijuana. So it sounds, or including the logo of the facility. So it really sounds like they're trying to limit okay, your advertising of marijuana products as opposed to saying you can't sell anything else. So if we go to um, section N, prohibitions, an RMD for dispensary may not sell any products other than marijuana, including MIPs and marijuana seeds, and any, any other products such as vaporizers that facilitates the use of marijuana for medical purposes. Read that last part again, please. Yep. A dispensary may not sell any product other than marijuana, including MIPs, which is your food infused with marijuana, and marijuana seeds, and other products such as vaporizers that facilitate the use of marijuana for medical purposes. So vaping is a way to get uh, the medicine. So it does. But sound outside of that, you cannot sell anything so else. So yoga mats are not. You could right. sell bongs from the service. <laughs> Sir, you're selling a service. I'm, I'm the way no, I'm interpreting that, that. The way, but it says may not sell any products that facilitate the use of marijuana for medical purposes. So that all that other stuff sell is vaporizers either. No, you can sell vaporizers because yeah. that facilitates the use of the medical marijuana. So you can sell marijuana, MIPs, and vaporizer, uh, uh, vaporizers that help with the use of medical marijuana. That's all you can sell in a facility, in a dispensary. Jen. Has the city solicitor weighed in on this? I feel like we're all doing legal interpretations here without right. license to do so with a few. Well, I guess the other piece of it is, you know, we're not going to be, it's the state that will license the proponent. So the person mm -hmm. goes to the state says, here's what I want to do. Here's right. my business plan. Right. Regardless and the state's going to say yes or no. Services. Regardless of what my interpretation is, what the city solicitors is, what the Board of Health sure. is. So our zoning ordinance can say you can do X, Y, and Z, and you know in some places the statute clearly says if there's nothing that the city says, then here's the default. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think that you know you guys could debate whether it makes sense to say, you know, make all these prohibitions about being able to see in. You could leave it silent, and then the state licensing. Um, board could determine whether or not the person's allowed uh, or has visibility into exactly where the mm -hmm. cash mm -hmm. registers are right. so right right okay let's move for uh, Meredith and hit the other points that you want to address okay um, the 2,000 foot distance from um, another dispensary I had talked to Wayne this morning about adding that after speaking to my board members at a meeting the other night what I mean, we were actually asking for more distance between dispensaries. And the logic behind it is if the state 
by chance allows the city of Northampton to have two dispensaries, which I don't think it will in the first round. However, if in the future we're allowed two dispensaries, having them at a distance far enough apart will, will give more people access to the dispensaries to get their medicine, which will reduce the number of, of cards, let's use that word, that will be given to people to cultivate marijuana at home. We really, the more people that have access to a dispensary will limit how many people will get um, cultivation cards. And why, why is that a good thing? It is a good thing because it's go uh, cultivating at home is really going to eat up a lot of our resources in the city. We're going to be dealing with fire issues for people just buying grow lamps potentially at Walmart and overloading their circuits. We're going to be dealing with mold issues, odor complaints. We're going to be dealing with mm -hmm. theft if people know, possibly. I might be assuming that. So it's going to eat up a lot of our resources in the city, you know, from the police department, the building department, the health department. Mm -hmm. So I would really like to limit home cultivation. That's helpful. I just, I mm -hmm. didn't know any of that. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, you know, one on King Street and one in Florence in, in business owned area. And then other communities also will have easier access to getting, you know, to getting their medicine. And that, again, might be a state's um, licensing issue. You know, you have to go to the state and say, I want to locate here. And the state says, well, where's another one? We right. need to distribute this more broadly so that there's more access, um, as opposed to having it as a local restriction. I think, I think, go ahead. I think some of these restrictions are, are already restricted by the state. And we don't need to, and we probably should not put some of them in there. Well, this one was not the 2,000 foot. That's, uh, yeah, that's, that's an addition to the 500 foot. This is where um, we we interpret this part of the regulation different. Myself and my other public health colleagues, we interpret it in the state regulations that there is a 500 foot buffer around all um, schools, daycare, childcare, and places where children congregate. And as Carolyn said, their interpretation is because there is some language in there that's a little messy. Um, if the city doesn't have anything, then they can be less restrictive. Again, with my public health lens and everything that I know about state regulations, my interpretation is this is the minimum standards. They really, uh, they've never done this. To my knowledge, I think they just worded it. I don't know, it, it needs some wordsmithing. But anyways, long story short, I've asked the um, state attorney to interpret this. And they said it's 500 feet around schools, daycares, child cares, mm -hmm. and places where children congregate. And places where, uh, places where children congregate, right, are some parks. So when I was reading the ordinance today, the amended ordinance, there were a few recreation areas listed, but it said for example, so I'm just assuming that the other ones are also included right, that right. weren't listed. Like, like, park, so like Pulaski Park. Well, it says I.E. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. say, for example, it says that is. Oh, it does? I'm sorry. So it's very specific. I mean, I think it, maybe it should say E.G. It says I.E. Right. Right. So it says I.E. I.E. So. means it est. Um, that is. Right. I always thought it was for example, but. <laughs> e -G, e -G, e -G. Yeah. Yeah. I, think, I, I know from internal review that we were specific to say, here are all the places we think that it makes okay, sense. Yeah. And and um, so and that was because those are city. Uh, initially, it said city or city recreation facilities, um, you know, under the auspices of the rec department. Since they're coming in for site plan, I, I would prefer not to try to list every facility we don't want to yeah. place right. it next to. Give us the guidance that says 500 feet and an right. example. Mm -hmm. And so I that agree. we know what we're dealing with, because we'll deal with it one at a time. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the tricky part of that, um, and it, do you mind if I just read that um, right out of the regulation, the siting requirements? ARMD shall comply with all local requirements regarding siting, provided, however, that if no like local requirements exist, an RMD shall not be sited within a radius of 500 feet of a school, daycare center, or any facility which children commonly congregate. That is, I mean, I think every single one of us would interpret that last piece differently. You know, is Sweeties a place where children congregate or, you know, friendly? So I think that has to be thought of. I th they left that wide open in my opinion. But if, you know, if we look at it, what is it really saying? Mm -hmm. Children gathered in the masses congregating at 
a place, you know, a place, a well-known place over and over again, you know, so. I mean, that could be the corner of Maine and Pleasant. I mean, <laughs> it could be. Right. But that's exactly. this year. But Next year, the popular place is going to be. It could oh. be Boston. <coughs> Downtown Florence is where the kids come. But those right. aren't facilities either. It says any facility right. where children commonly congregate. But facility is a space or equipment. It's not necessarily, you know, brick and mortar. Again, then I'm wondering. Different. I'm wondering why we need to try to pigeonhole what what we think facilities are or what why not just leave the state standard mm -hmm. as vague as it is mm -hmm. to our and use that to our advantage mm -hmm. right so that if the friendlies in Florence is the facility of that particular year that seems to be heavily congregated then we stay away from that and next year if it's Maine and Pleasant we stay away from there mm -hmm. so we should eliminate F altogether you know, we should just that? eliminate F that's what I'm saying that's what I'm saying why it, it doesn't seem to be adding any more language it seems to be only adding restrictive language rather than leaving it intentionally ambiguous. Mm -hmm. right. Well, I, on the other I, hand, mean, though, if it's, if, I, I mean, I guess I would argue that if the state says, here are the guidelines and they're very ambiguous or they could be interpreted by, uh, differently by different people, if the city doesn't have their own regulations, then if you put regulations in there and say that the board has the jurisdiction to um, make the final determination, then that gives flexibility for you know, a park that's within 500 feet, but maybe three block faces away that you can't even see from the park. It still may be physically within 500 feet, but nobody can see it. And so, I mean, the same thing could be said for a place where people congregate at the bottom of Con Street. You can't see Pleasant Street, but that's within 500 feet. So if you left it as, you know, a site by site basis, that could also address it. Yeah. I, I still think, though, that Carolyn was reading the statute correctly, that we could put, we could reduce the, the number of feet. And uh, again, I think that goes to this issue of how are we treating this thing? If it's a medical facility, why do we need to keep these 500 feet from where children are? I mean, I don't know. I don't know how, what the AG is going to say about that, but um, yeah. I, I don't know. I, it doesn't feel great to me. Along that line, are, are pharmacies prohibited from within 500 feet? Well, of exactly. No, mm -hmm. of course not. I don't think they are. Right. But, but it's not up to us to determine how to treat it. The state's telling us how to treat it. Well, no, I mean, I think it's an open question. I think it's a, it's a, it's a question of interpreting the statute. I mean, when Carolyn read it, I got it wrong the first time, but I think on second reading, there, the state is saying we will mandate 500 feet if a state doesn't put their own, if a city doesn't put their own regulations into place. It doesn't no, say that 500 right, right. is minimum. Right. So. I think it does. You think it does, really? Let's let's keep going. Uh, quick question: How many dispensaries are being uh, awarded to Hampshire County? Five. Five. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's uh, keep going. Any other? And then the last comment I made was um, letter I: Any dispensary and/or treatment center shall maximize potential for transit access. I was when um, I made this recommendation yesterday. I was actually asking it to be a requirement that it was on a transit line, not an aspirational thing. I just think, again, more people that can access these dispensaries, the better off we are in the long run by limiting cultivation, home cultivation. So that's why it, um, we recommended that. Okay. Any questions? Any other questions or follow ups for Meredith? No? Okay, okay thank, thank you. you. Anybody else? Hello. I'm Arnon Verd, and I live in 45 Orchard Road in Swampscott, up in the North Shore. Um, I, I want to talk a little bit about this, this 500 feet uh, piece, and especially around um, preschool. So maybe 30 seconds of where this thing even came from. So obviously, this is illegal from a federal perspective, and there's all sorts of federal crackdown on dispensaries that are too close to something. From a practical perspective, it pretty much only happened in Colorado, and that was when dispensaries were too close to schools. And what happens is a variety of, of states, including Massachusetts, started including things like schools and, and things like park or congregate or even um, and preschools in the, in the regulations. That became pretty, uh, pretty common. But the thing that actually changed is the call memo that came out about a couple of months ago that essentially said, look, for, for states that are regulating themselves in, in an organized fashion, like Massachusetts, of course, has probably some of the best regulations, we're not going to be um, involved. And 
because of the type of organization that we have, New England Treatment Access, we're actually going to be involved in a variety of cities. Um, and I just want to share with you what's happening in, in other places. So I'll give you a Brooklyn as an example, which we are also applying for, for a permit there. Very similar to Northampton. So 75% of people there uh, voted uh, for it. Well, Slow down. Thank you. 75% well, <laughs> <laughs> of people in Brooklyn voted for it. In uh, Northampton, it was 82%. Um, we were going through exactly the same process that we're going through here. The initial uh, recommendation there was 500 to, uh, feet away from school and recreational areas. And as we were going through the various planning committees, et cetera, the recreational uh, parks we were taking out, because people essentially were making the point of people can walk 500 feet very quickly. Why do we even need that, or even 500 from schools? Um, and certainly, from it comes to, to the state regulations, um, those are, for this specific element, it's not the minimum. Most cities that we've been at have been doing something that is less than that to a certain extent. That's probably the most common thing that, that is happening, except for cities and towns that have a moratorium. So that's, that's a different story, which is not um, the case here. We actually did have, um, in one of the meetings, it only happened once out of about 10 meetings, and one gentleman that mentioned the, the preschool idea and wanted to, to add that. Um, the, the, the room pretty much, if this was Brooklyn, erupted because people were saying, wait a second, you have an issue with unattended preschoolers leaving the preschool, going to the dispensary, going through the security process, showing their card, going inside, yeah. <laughs> taking, it, taking it outside and consuming it, and that's the issue. And we're like, okay, I'm, I'm withdrawing it, and we didn't have preschools anymore. And here's the issue in Brooklyn, and I bet you it's the same situation here. Um, if you were put preschools in Brooklyn, you have essentially a moratorium, because you have 80-something um, preschools there, we actually, we, j just for the sake of it, we just put it on the map with, with the planning department, and that's it. You see circles around the whole place. That's it. It's the end of it. Now, what, if, if you want to have a moratorium, this is actually a very effective way of doing it. You put preschools in it, you will have a moratorium. You will not be able to open something, something here. And that's certainly, you know, I, I, I think, not a decision that you, that you want to make, given what the people here voted for. But I would, I don't know, I don't know what's, what's the right verb for it. Suggest, ask that you do not put uh, uh, preschools because A, I just personally think it doesn't make sense, and uh, two, it will essentially limit dramatically the amount of places that you can actually do it in uh, North Island, which I don't think is the intention, neither of what the state was trying to do, what other cities are trying to do, what you're trying to do, and so that, that, that's my point. <coughs> Keeping it away from school and recreational areas, I think that's a debate that, that you should have. I, I personally think that uh, with the kind of security that, that we have go one, when one goes into, into this, that's probably good enough. And, and, and what actually is going to, um, to time meeting in Brooklyn is just 500 feet from, from school. I'll just share one last um, comment about that. One of the people in, in the committee said, look, I, I'm not a very fast uh, a walker, but I can walk 500 feet very, um, very quickly. I, I feel like the 500 feet is, is a warm and fuzzy, that we feel that we're doing something. But, but in reality, if people want to, to get it, even in the black market today, they're probably able to do it. That's not what's going to, to stop them. What's going to stop them is strong security, mm. regulation, and, 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 that, and, that, and that's pretty much it. And, and of course, the regulations here in Massachusetts are very, very good and define very clearly what needs to happen and how one gets the, the process of getting it. So I would ask that it's not necessary for us or for anybody else that's going to come here uh, to take out the, uh, the school piece. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hi there. Uh, my name is Marisa Heppel. Um, I'm a resident. I'm also the coordinator of the Northampton Prevention Coalition. Did you say your name again? Sorry. Yes, Marisa Hebel. So we are based out of the um, Northampton Public Schools, and our primary goal is to reduce substance use amongst youth in Northampton. Um, so I'm just going to give you the youth public health perspective on, on this and, and a quick glimpse into where we're, we're looking at the way that we're looking at this. Um, while it's clear that there are components of marijuana that are beneficial to people with certain illnesses, there's also evidence that marijuana is not beneficial to the developing brain. So the teenage brain in particular is um, susceptible to the negative effects of marijuana, um, especially when we're looking at um, learning, attention, memory, reaction time. Um, we know that one in six people who start using marijuana regularly as an adolescent um, will develop an addiction and right now teens are seeking treatment for marijuana more than all substances combined that said um, right now it's not the norm if you're a teenager in, Mar in Northampton to be using marijuana in fact eight out of ten Northampton teens are not using marijuana well, we know that increased access and increased availability are the 
key community factors and in increased youth use. The most effective community prevention, uh, I'm sorry, the most effective prevention at the community level restricts availability and restricts advertising. So we want to make it clear that that we want mar marijuana as medicine to be available to those who need it and not available to young people. Uh, silence, when it comes to substance use, silence um, is, it sends a very loud message to young people. And we have an opportunity right now to make it very clear to Northampton youth that a dispensary in Northampton does not mean that their community nor their community leaders are in favor of youth use. So with regards to zoning and planning, I'm getting to that. Um, with regards to zoning and planning and the regulations as they've been put forth with, um, by the Massachusetts Department of Public Health, we're, really, we're actually particularly interested in making sure that the 500 feet limit from any facility where a child is is, 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 is enforced, um, as well as anything relating to the advertising or display. So those re the parts of the regulations that limit, um, that put restrictions on the signage out front, that it cannot have anything that relates to a medical facility or, um, or depicts marijuana plants, the, advertise the, the restrictions on, um, on not allowing marijuana to be advertised from the front, the restrictions that do not allow marijuana or marijuana products to be clearly visible from the outside. Um, did I hit all those? Um, yeah, so those are the ones with regards to zoning and planning that we are particularly interested in. And just two last quick notes. Um, I just want to say that when it comes to best practices at the community level for limiting youth alcohol use, so two things that are very critical are um, limiting the density of retail establishments, as well as um, best practices with regards to limiting youth alcohol use um, include a 1,000 foot buffer um, from a childcare facility, a school, and a residential neighborhood. So I just want to make note of that. Um, and finally, I believe that phase two of the application process um, applicants need to have community input. So I don't know if this is actually the right place to request that we be able to weigh in and, 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 and give input in that process. But um, it might be here, it might be city council, but I just want to say it while I'm here that we would like to have input into that process so that we just request being notified when an applicant does apply for a dispensary application here in Northampton. Okay. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yep. No, right here. Uh, hi, my name is Leslie Tara Lori. I actually live at 113 Packardville Road in Pelham, but I do feel like I live in Northampton because I spend a lot of my time here as the executive director of Tapestry Health. And Tapestry Health has been the organization that actually has provided needle exchange services in the city for the last 17 years. And I'm extremely respectful of the fact that what we're really interested in in Northampton is not encouraging drug use, and especially for youth. And um, what I would like to do is to just say that the manner in which our needle exchange program has functioned and has been heralded, um, I would say would be something to take note of in terms of some of the many conversations that you've been having. Um, if you look at the corner of um, Main Street and Center Street, you will see an enormous <coughs> sign that says needle exchange. Um, it does not encourage drug use. It, in fact, affords people information about where they need to go. The needle exchange program actually is um, a place where downstairs from it is um, the, um, a very famous music place where very often people, youth, are waiting to get into the iron horse. Um, my feeling is that part of the reason that the needle exchange program has been so successful is because it has a public health perspective. And I think what is really important for Northampton is to ensure that in the same way that Northampton showed the way for public health in regard to the issue of drug addiction and needle exchange, I would hope that what Northampton does is the same thing in terms of medical marijuana. 
what we're talking about here is not recreational use. It isn't as if what a kid is going to be able to do is to walk into one of these facilities. In the same way, in terms of needle exchange, we're not allowed to serve someone who's under 17. It's our public health professionals who are the ones who are able to deal with individuals who need help. And what we've heard from um, a doctor here who is courageous enough at this point to be certifying individuals who need med medical marijuana is exactly that. What we need to do is to see this as a very important next step medical intervention. And what we want to be able to do is to have it accessible, but to have it in a place where there isn't shame and also appreciate the fact that there are very different kinds of people who will want and need to use this. And I would just reference one really important CNN special by Sanjay Gupta where um, there was a whole sequence with actually a young girl who was five years old and because of medical marijuana is now no longer dealing with many, many seizures. And I think what we want to be able to do in our community is to ensure that this occurs and to not spend our time with some of the conversation that we've had. I think Massachusetts has the most restrictive regulations in regard to this. Tapestry Health, because it didn't have the kind of financing, we will not be applying for this dispensary. But what we will be doing is supporting someone else who is committed to this kind of public health. So again, I would really implore you not to look at any further regulations than what the state has done. Northampton has been really good in terms of its more recent zoning regulations. And it seems to me that we would be taking a very positive step for public health to be able to recognize that there is a distinction between medical marijuana and recreational use and see this kind of facility in the same way as a CVS. So again, I'm proud to have worked here for as long as I have and I really look forward to your uh, wisdom as you go forward. Thank you. Thank you. Jen. Yep. Leslie, yep. we've got a quick question. Oh, sure. What would be your recommendation for us uh, relative to the distance from the schools? Um, because of the really, what I would say is just amazingly um, strict security, that I truly don't feel that, um, you know, as what Arnon Vera just said about what Brookline looked at, you know, it may make people feel good, but practically it's not going to have an effect. That would be my, mm -hmm. um, my answer. Thank you. Yep, Arna. If I can just add to that. What the state is doing is kind of unprecedented when it comes to, to not just the security of the place. There's a new felony. I don't know if you heard about this. That if somebody does a diversion from buying a, from one of these dispensaries, it's a minimum five years in prison. So literally, if you, if you go in and you buy whatever it is that, that you're buying and you go out and you're giving it to somebody else, that's the minimum. So I think that if somebody wanted to do that, I suppose there's a black market that appears in Northampton just like everywhere, everywhere else, you would do it that way. But, and, and, and think about the implications of this. So you're going in, you're on camera, you, put in, you have to put your identification in the state uh, um, supplied card that allows you to do all of this. You buy it and then you divert. So everything, all the evidence is already there. This is why they created that special felony for fire. So that's one of the biggest restrictions. So it's another added thing. So I think it's important for you to know. Okay, thank you. Yeah. How, what's the volume that someone on, on a medical card can purchase within a period of time? Sure. The, the absolute maximum is five ounces a month. The average that, uh, that we've seen in other states is 1.3. Thank you. And the reason why they allow for such a, for the higher is for some people uh, can't actually use vaporizers. They have to use things like bath salts, or other elements, and for those, you need to have more of it to actually have impact because you're not actually taking it in. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry, actually, the regulations in Massachusetts are 10 ounces for a 60 day supply. So, 10 ounces uh, for a 60 day supply, and um, uh, you can have that waived if you, if you have your, if your physician decides that you're that whatever requirements for you need to be exceeded, but it's 10 ounces. Right, so, so five, five months, 10 for two months. So that's what I was saying five right. a month for one month, 10 for two months. 
<laughs> it's, it's, it's not, it's not okay. five ounces for one month. The regulation says six to okay. ten ounces for two months. Anyone else in the public who wishes to speak to this? No. Okay. Well, we've had a lot <laughs> to discuss, <laughs> Randy. I can see them. The question that I have is, are daycare centers considered schools? I think that would be the big, I mean, that's one of the big worries that they have. I think that's one of the worries, but also one of the counter arguments is, does, does, does it really matter? Because preschoolers aren't going to be walking into the dispensary. Well, I know that, but I mean, so if you're going to put it in the regulations, you sort of have to know what it means. Right. Daycare center is it is yeah. in the state rec? No, it's here. And Probably age. Provided, however, no local requirements exist. Oh, okay. Right. So the state it does exist in the state regs. If no local requirement exists. Ah. So it doesn't say out of the gate. Is so if we do nothing, then that will be imposed upon Northampton or if if we have a local requirement that exempts daycares right. or something my interpretation and this, uh, the, the state attorney interpretation public health attorney interpre interpretation is it's 500 feet this is the minimum requirement so I think it's best just to you know ask our city attorney our city solicitor his interpretation you know leave it up to, to the people who went to school for this but I, I think planners and public health people are interpreting it differently right Is there anything in the state regulations about hours of operation? Eight to eight. That was the recommendation. Yeah, eight no. to eight. So that's in not not in the city regulations in the state. No, the red. I think in the in the handout, if you have it, it's colored. I think red was state regulations. Blue no, was no, added. No, no. Mm -mm. That's all local. Oh, okay. That's just changes since the count since it was introduced to okay. council. Okay. So the different differentiation between the red and the blue. Okay. What I'm wondering is whether we can just throw out that whole section, except for maybe the part about you don't want a blank wall in the front of the store. Which section are you talking about? Section four. The whole. Well, if we do that, we're going to get 500 feet. I don't want that. Right. But it's, if you make it 1,000 feet, you don't think the state's going to insist on 500? I want zero No, feet. we could make it 200 feet. <clears throat> yeah. I don't that's, want there that's to be the argument, restriction. Is that we could... We think, but we need I don't think interpretation. I don't think that's true. Well, the other piece of it is, if the local reg regulation says X, Y, or Z, and the interpretation at the state whoever's level. licensing right. says to the applicant, oh, you know what, you're closer than 500 feet, and yes, the city regs say there's 200, but we're not going to give you the license, that's what's going to make the determination. Right. So, right. I mean, I would recommend that you keep something in here in the event that... Um, the interpretation that if you don't have anything, then the 500 mm -hmm. stands mm -hmm. because it's not going to, I don't think you, it can hurt to have it in there, you know, either At way. A reasonable because it's, amount. Right. Don't get because, me wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much in favor of the 500 foot rule. So, I mean, I guess I would suggest that depending on what you all feel about the interpretation about, um, you know, whether or not daycare should be scratched from it or any of these other things that you could go ahead and make a recommendation on that. Okay. I just wanted to let you know that the ordinance is continuing its public hearing to our meeting um, at 6 o'clock on November 4th. So we're going to let you continue your in-board discussion. We've heard the public input here and we'll continue it and probably close it and deal with it that evening. We're short a member tonight. So what, okay. What's the date again? Sorry. November 4th. November 4th. In this room <laughs> at 6 o'clock. Okay. That's a Monday. It's a Monday. Okay. Yeah. And we do public safety at 5, and then we'll do ordinance at 6. And we'll con so we're continuing our public hearing to that point. Okay. Um, and we'll let you discuss with it yourselves your <laughs> as long as you want. <laughs> Thank you. It's still the first in. So we're. <laughs> 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 the children congregate at ball fields. <laughs> Fenway. They congregate at public hearings. Like, okay. <laughs> they do sometimes. Sometimes. Soccer. Soccer, yeah. <laughs> right.
and I don't know whether this is a question for, for Meredith or for, or for Carolyn, but and maybe this goes back to what you were suggesting, Mark, or talking about. Could we just accept the state, could we just do nothing, accept the state regulations and address them case by case? My interpretation would be if you don't say anything about the distance and what's included in the distance, you know, is it just schools, is it schools and daycares, is it school, daycare, preschool, um, then the default would be, and it's, it says in here, the default is schools, daycare centers, and any facility in which children commonly congregate. So I would say the default goes back to potentially uh, a more vague standard that may not meet what you all think is appropriate or that city council, you know, that maybe you don't want to recommend to city council. So I agree with that interpretation. Mm -hmm. But what about all the, you know, the security? I mean, it sounds like, I mean, from what's been described, you know, these are pretty secure. <laughs> You know, based upon the state regulations, they're pretty secure operations. Right. I mean, do we need to add, you know, should not be visible? I mean, I mean, I mean, do all that kind of like what Frandy was saying. I mean, do we really need to add all of this, or, or let's add the least? I'm thinking, let's add the least amount we think we need to, not the most amount we right. need to think of, yeah. and then well, handle it as it comes up. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you were going to if you were going to move in that direction, I would certainly I think C is important given the whole design um, characteristics that you guys have been working on for all yeah. these districts. Mm -hmm. That's the one. But, I wouldn't, would. um, but wouldn't that be covered as part of any other business? Um, not necessarily. Mm -mm. Not necessarily because if they feel like they're getting pushed back from the state that they can't be mm -hmm. visible, that they have to you know, put up a barrier for some reason, you know, block off the windows. Um, this would be there to say, well, you're going to have to find some other mechanism to meet the state criteria and meet the local zone. Or well, a different location something. where that isn't an issue because of the way the building is structured right. in and of right. itself. Right. 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 I think everybody in their headers is envisioning downtown Main Street. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But, but that might not. Right. Mm -hmm. It might be North King Street and it's not an issue. So, um, and then, um, you know, I guess I would, uh, you know, the other ones I think is up, are up to you to debate whether it's necessary to, um, you know, I think the, I think you probably should address the 500 or the distance issue and what, what um, facilities would be included in that. Um, and then, um, and in terms of the other ones, um, you know, I think it was just sort of in the interest of trying to reach and address the issues that have been raised. So it's up right. to you all about what you want to recommend to City Council. Jen? Um, I guess I'm just wondering whether it would make sense for me to sort of put together a proposal of what I'd like to see to just get us moving. Does yeah. that make sense? Okay. We'll decide after you. Yeah. <laughs> it depends well, on what you, you say. Yeah. I've got one question before you do that, Jen. My thinking is it's unlikely that people are actually smoking at the dispensary. We've got a clause in here about um, scrubbers. Yeah, it's scrub, you know, is taking care of the odor, and I just view that as that's an in the grow. No. But that's that's for the grow area, isn't it? No, the raw yeah. marijuana has a smell if you don't even if you're Can not burning it. Can it be it, consumed or used in the sales facility? They won't be able to, but in the state regulations, you can for teaching purposes only. But we, but that's already been addressed. Vapor, right, vaporized, right. That's addressed though by a different ordinance that's already on the books as far as a different campaign. regulation, a board of health regulation. Mm -hmm. So, the scrubbing. But if they're, they're using that language because of the growing of marijuana. Right. There's a significant odor, so they right. want to. Any kind of nuisance. I'll take your word for that. <laughs> and I mean, the, the other thing, the processing, whatever, I mean, it's not just going to be the raw Discard, product, right. but it's going to be, you know, brownies or candy or whatever, people who aren't going to be smoking. So if there's baking involved, that okay. might create. <clears throat> Thank you. Jen, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, that's fine. Um, give me a little more time to think. Okay, so I'm just going to go through them uh, um, according to the letter. Um, 
I don't have a problem with a limiting the hours, although mm -hmm. I am coming from a perspective of that I don't want to put any additional restrictions that the regu that the statute doesn't already require. Um, but I don't. I mean, I don't think eight to eight is unreasonable. Um, to the extent that B is already in the statute, I don't know if we need it in there, but I'm not opposed to it. Um, C, I think, is really important. The issue about the transparency of the storefront windows, both from a zoning perspective and also what the doctor talked about, the sort of public shaming of the facilities. I don't want that to occur, so I think it's important for those two reasons. Um, so when you say it's important, keep it in to keep it in mm. to keep C to keep C in because it talks about having um, a transparent storefront. I recognize that's going to be a challenge for the maybe to to be consistent with the statute and this regulation, but I think it it's is. I think it's important. Yeah, I think yeah. It and I think it's important enough to to make them do it. Um, um, a D, I'm not opposed to, but again, if it's already in the statute, I don't know why we're why we would restate it. Um, e, I'm fine with. F, I'd, uh, I'm not a numbers person. Um, I, I would I would suggest to us that we put an absolute minimal distance in, um, way less than 500 feet, and also specifically exclude make make it clear that we're excluding preschools. Um, and that way, I think if the state is interpreting that they still that they have to put the 500 feet in because we've gone under 500 feet, which I don't I don't think that's right. I don't think that's the right interpretation, but. In the event that they do, if we specifically exclude preschool, we still at least have that excluded from the 500 feet. Um, I think we have to be affirmative about that. Um, Can I just interject, but while yes. you're still on that, um, college and university is there as well. I mean, the edge of Smith College is right next to downtown. So, uh -huh, uh -huh. you know, well, I guess if it's 200 feet, let's say, that's probably less of an issue. 500 feet certainly would have preclude mm -hmm. uh -huh. many of the business the, a lot of the business is on this end um, so I don't know if that right. is necessary um, to add college and university I mean I guess now that you're saying that I think the whole thing about the recreation facility is ridiculous um, right. for lack of a better word um, I, I I think you know what what the public uh, the Board of Public Health said about G that that makes sense to me for all the reasons that were stated so I would keep that in um, and H I think is ridiculous so I would take that out um, I not because I think the concept is ridiculous of being attractive to more marketing to minors but just because I now understand the statute to be so restrictive that right. I am not at all concerned that they could that I don't think they can do that under the statute so it's not necessary as well. I think it's unnecessary right. Right. I agree better word than ridiculous <laughs> and then what about I? I oh sorry I I don't have the most That's the transit yeah access. oh or on um, the transit line I don't have a problem with that it seems like to me that we're we're saying something about the business you know advising a business how to run its business though I mean the survival center is not on a mass, mass transit line I mean you know there are lots of things we would like they they will want to be if they can I, I would view it as a positive attribute when they come before us, mm -hmm. but I don't. I don't see that. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I didn't see. I don't see it as a requirement. So I guess I, do, I see it as a sort of no harm, no foul. I think it's a, um, you know, not a bad thing. To Max, mm -hmm. the way it's said is just a hint. And just for the record, you and I had almost the same ones. I had marked out yes. G, F, <laughs> H, and I. Say that again, Tim. I had marked out B, F, H, and I, and the preschool just because I think right. it is. Uh, it makes us feel good, but I don't see it as being uh, part of the real business process that's going to happen. And what do you have for a min What do you suggest for a minimal distance? Two. Two. Just to have it. Yeah. Yeah. No, just I to have it, so yeah. that given what Caroline said. Andy, comments? I don't know. What were you suggesting as a minimum distance? I think Ann's right, too. I mean, I think we just need a, we need a number. Um, or you could conceivably have a different number for 
three schools as the rest too. It's, it's too complicated. Because <laughs> oh they, I mean, my, their legs are shorter. <laughs> yeah, right. I, guess, I mean, my my point is that I don't think it's an issue. So it should be. I, I we need a number just because we need a number. Because right. I I read the statute okay. to say if you pick a number, we won't enforce the five hundred. So one. <laughs> one hundred or one foot. <laughs> one foot. <laughs> Mark, you're in the building. How? wide is a typical storefront say downtown 30 40 feet 18 to, yeah. Oh, yeah 18 I mean, to 40 feet downtown it's yeah 20 40 feet so i mean i think we're envisioning big stores with a blocked up storefront on main street and i don't think practically that's going to happen mm -hmm. right 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 that's the worst case scenario in terms of trying to put these pieces together right right speaking of that is there something that says it has to be a storefront no it just says it has to be in keeping consistent with the character of the neighborhood so it could be an office inside a building mm -hmm. that's the way to do it well, <laughs> that's probably the way it'll be done so right now we've got uh, public comment session is still open we can close public comment we can keep the hearing open we can get uh, some legal guidance on the definition of preschool or daycare or the or the legalities of how it's written and, and get an interpretation of, of how the statute is currently written with respect to the daycare and preschool so this is also going back to ordinance so this is a recommendation to ordinance then ordinance is going to meet they're going to recommend recommend a city council so city solicitor has looked at this he's fine with it he hasn't looked at the you know he hasn't interpreted the state statute on those specific um, comments but I, I would encourage you to go ahead and make a recommendation because it's better to have something in place than nothing so so uh, ordinance continue uh, continue their hearing to November 6th 4th 4th mm -hmm. so we could make a recommendation we were supposed to come out of this joint but they didn't have a quorum so we can make a recommendation to ordinance ordinance meets again they make a recommendation to council so right. it's going to go through a couple more iterations before right. somebody signs off on it um, I agree, Jen, with uh, your interpretation, um, with what you, <coughs> what you th everything you thought was important, um, I did as well, and, th and things you thought were silly um, or ridiculous. Um, or unnecessary. Or unnecessary. <laughs> uh, I tend to agree with you on that. So <coughs> I, I, I have a problem with 100 feet minimum distance myself. I don't know. I was, I was thinking 300. So two is in the middle. That's two. Yeah, two hundred is a good okay. count. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think, to be honest, a, any number is a is a feel good number. Right. For us, and five hundred doesn't feel good, so we're trying to find another number. Well, I, when, you, when you said two, I thought you meant two. <laughs> you literally two. No, I'm serious because yeah. that's my point. Like, I don't think there should be any, but right. we have to pick a number. Speaking, um, yeah, we'll have to I also think because that's the way they do it. The state may come in and say, no, it's five right. hundred feet. Right. 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 I think that's what's going to happen. So we could continue to find that out, or we could just recommend it. But if they do, they do, and you don't yeah, have to so let them remember that, that you're at least reasonably and comfortable with. At this point, all it is is the attorney general yeah. weighing in on their interpretation. I mean, we're not there yet. We're not right. in enforcement, so it's, it's still so just one person running for governor. Giving their <laughs> <laughs> so let's start uh, here. Uh, public comment still open. Do we, are we comfortable that we have enough information to muddle our way through this and make a recommendation to ordinance? And in that case, are we ready to close public comment? I move we close public comment. Second. Second. All in favor? Okay. So we have a semi-quasi-inferred motion from Jen on what to include or not to include. You want to make that a formal motion? Um, yeah, was I clear enough, Carolyn? For I think so, but I'll go so. back and read. And okay. Um, sorry, um, just you want me to read point of clarification. No, I just don't know what we decided on. I mean, I, I really feel like I want to make the point that it should be a minimal footage. Um, I don't know if we arrived at what we felt was agreeable. 200 was a feel good number. No? Right, but I th feel like I don't, we, don't, we shouldn't be doing that, right? Feeling good. What are you in favor of? 
10 feet. Zero? Like, well, no, because I mean, I think we have to pick a number. Right. So 10 feet. Zero is a number. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think, I, I think it's also, I think it's, I, I think that if we pick a really low number, it explains to people what our point was. If we pick 200, it makes us actually look like we thought this through and we thought 200 for some reason was a better number. Right? My Which is, Jen, I think we've learned, I've learned a lot about this in the last month, and I think I don't want to communicate to the general public that we think that these belong next to schools. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think they, now that I know how they run, mm -hmm. I don't see there being any problem at all. It runs an entirely secure operation by the way it's, mm -hmm. by the way it's run, and moreover, the threat of felony after you've mm -hmm. reported purchasing it. So I, I think that does all lean towards the it doesn't matter what distance it is, but I don't want to communicate to the general population who's going to get this at a very, you know, a, 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 an opinionated level because of the topic that it is. So in that regard, I think we do need a reasonable number and, I, you know, something that says to people that we the state put it at 500 if we want to put it there or something less than that but i i think it would look frivolous and would be misinterpreted to put it at 10 feet i i, I think ultimately i don't know that it matters all that much i i think if if you look at it the way brookline did where they had they started off 500 feet from uh, schools or recreational areas they took out recreational areas and took out daycare we could do the same thing and just take it say 500 feet from schools and leave it at that and to be honest i don't think 200 or 10 or one foot from schools is going to physically matter with where these mm -hmm. dispensaries are going to end up but publicly it would send the message they're also not next to commercial districts i mean smith folk is probably the closest one to a commercial right. district right okay just for educational purposes are there any other classes of business which we would which there are existing or what other classes of business are there these types of prohibitions liquor stores not under zoning mm -hmm. not under zoning but under but I think liquor licenses um, yeah have to be so far from churches and schools and from each other no I doubt that no no, no. I've never seen that in anything And perversely, that's one of my pet peeves that we have like four pharmacies all along King Street, mm -hmm. all tumbling over each other. But, but that's something else again. <laughs> that's right. how that happens. Right. So I'll make a motion that we um, recommend to ordinance. Is it recommend yes. to ordinance to uh, to pass um, the language as amended as about to be read by Carolyn. Okay. Wow. <laughs> well done. Really nicely worded, huh? <laughs> so the approval criteria would be for um, A, hours of operation, and then B would be building facades and property must be consistent with the character of the neighborhood, and then C would be buildings must be ventilated, D would be the power use, the grow lights, mm -hmm. and then um, the next one would be E, um, strike preschool and keep 500 feet. Is that right? No. Oh, 200. Oh, 200. Okay. And strike preschool and 200 feet. And um, then uh, recreation facilities, strike that. Yes. College and university, where we can. And what about college and university? Strike or keep in? Well, we got it down to 200 feet, so. Okay. <coughs> so keep that. Yeah. I mean, it could be on Green Street or, or State Street. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and then keep the 2,000 feet for separation between, mm -hmm. and then yeah. strike H and uh, the last two. So you want to leave in the 2,000 feet? Uh, I don't think it hurts. Well, they were looking to yeah, distribute them distribute. more widely. Was the notion? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, if there's ever there two, which right. is what I heard from the Department of Health, I was satisfied with the explan. I, not more than satisfied with the explanation for that. I, I thought that made sense to me. Okay. All right. Okay. So we have a motion. Second. Second, Devin. 
All in favor? Approved. Here we go. So off to ordinance, and they will discuss it again on November 4th. Thank you. I've never seen it. No, I think the whole state regulation. Oops. Oh, your daughter. Oh, thanks, thanks, Leslie. Uh, I see. She had a very good running a week or so ago. Her picture was in the paper. Oh, that's great. Good. I set up the email. Let's do this really fast. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I missed that. What did you say? Yeah. Where are you going? Like, I'm going to email him and tell him that I like him. Oh, you got to refuse yourself. I got a public hearing last night. I'll show you that. Show me that language. Oh, no, but you don't have to. I agree with you. Okay. Didn't I make that clear? It seems to too. I mean, it's like, it's clear on its face. As the exit. <laughs> mm -hmm. I got a question. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's very strange. When non lawyers say things like, oh, it's a little. Oh, this is this Miss College thing. It's a little cloudy and it needs to be fixed up. You don't get to fix up the statute right. unless, like, the legislature goes back and formally amends it. Like, you're right. stuck with what it is. Yeah, even if it's messy. Even if it's messy. Mm -hmm. And then it often is. Mm -hmm. Especially something like this that they were never done before. Right. Well, and then that 12 people have put it together in 14 exactly. meetings. Right, exactly. Right. It's mm -hmm. always going to be. But you're stuck with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you do a site visit on Um No, I loved it. I loved I that they talked about poverty. I mean, Brandy, yeah. like the last time I was on. I'm sure you spoke with almost no one. And he's on his seventh you what? or something. He's like been in, in legislature for seven Brandy's years like already. 13. Yeah, I think he was 26. Yeah, right. I mean, he's Who's super. Talk to? Who's this? Um, ben Downing. Ben Downing. He's a senator out in Berkshire County. Yeah. Um, I went to uh, the elder, I mean, did the 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 elder services lunch. Oh. That's uh, John's, John's gig out in Berkshire's. See, look at and Ben Downing spoke, and it was just a really great speech. Don't you love it when somebody actually? Yes. There. Yeah. Because I was like, uh, you know, are, you know, <laughs> those like, have I been to? Exactly. Here's and he even said, like, <laughs> like, I'm not here to like pander to what the audience, what I think the audience wants me to talk about. Which, Oops, thank you so much. You know, like, mm -hmm. usually that's how this thing goes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't hear it. No, you don't. No, you really don't. And he, did, he had this great story, which I, I later found out the whole third base thing, the whole triple thing. Oh, um, yeah. That that was not his father's original name. No, uh, Ann Richards. Oh, was it Ann Richards' original She was one that made the line famous when she was running against, or she was talking about George Bush and said, at the Democratic Convention, the year that they were against her, she said, oh. you know, George Bush is a person who... Um, thinks he hit a home or thinks he hit a home run. Yeah, thinks he hit, thinks he hit a home run, but again, yeah, was born on third base. Was born on third base. Right. 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 I had never heard that before. No, I was like, it's awesome. Either she gave us all a bunch of this, so get it from her because oh, otherwise she's going to go over the next time. Just go over and ask her. Yes. Next time. Right. Right. Yeah. Great. <laughs> what happened to? Uh, yeah, there it is. All right. Just for you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Right. It's in the, um... Well, that was more fun than expected, although mm -hmm. mm. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. I have a son in Colorado, so... He, we That's went great. through all this oh, when then they started out. <laughs> so, <laughs> many yeah. It was really, really bad. It, and they just made all these mistakes. Oh, um, that's unfortunate. Oh, them because you get into it. Are you a presenter again? Huh? No. Oh. I'm keeping my mouth and shut. Yeah. Four plants, just to say. I'm with you. Oh, my God. <laughs> so nice. Make a motion? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Still know that's very sad. <laughs>
Rick, did you break something or what's going on? No, it wasn't me. No score at the top of the second. No score? Uh -oh. <laughs> I'm actually into it this year. Maybe we can do a split screen on the <laughs> Red Sox on the right side and the. It is March. Of course I don't know right. what that gets you. Yeah, where did you get the January idea? I don't know. I made it up. No, when I'm right, I'm right. When I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Well, that's different. But this time, you were wrong. But I don't think it, it, it's a distinction without a difference. Yeah. Are good? All set. Okay, so it is about 20 of 9. We think it's around the third inning of the Red Sox game. Oh, top of the second. Zero, zero. Top of the second. There we go. So we are going to open up our second hearing uh, for tonight, slated for 745, for a site plan for a 12,475 square foot Smith College Health Services building at 21 Belmont Ave, Northampton Map ID 31D-41. Before we formally open the hearing, I need to make a note that uh, because of what I do professionally, I've done a lot of work and am doing work with uh, Berkshire Design. I don't feel that um, uh, it does not allow me to, that's double negative, it impedes my ability to be impartial on this project. If anyone in the public feels differently, I can recuse myself. No, that being said, Rick, uh, you're going to present tonight? Yeah. We already have one member that we Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'm Rick Klein, principal with the Berkshire Design Group here representing Smith College. Site plan approval for a 12,475 foot health services building. Oh my God, the plan that you have on the wall there is, uh, let's see if I can orient you. The big gray block on the left is Menden Hall, the The gray block on the bottom is Scott Jim. The city street that goes by through there is Belmont Street. And this is a, a, an existing conditions currently. And as you may remember, last year, um, Smith took down a couple of buildings there. They're highlighted in this slide. The buildings themselves are the dark gray, and the parking that was associated with them are the lighter gray. So as you can see, it used to be pretty much all parking there. And so what we're proposing to do is we took the buildings down. Now what we'd like to do is insert a building there um, that also makes room for a future building. It also then reorients the parking. And the goal here is to pr propose a health services building that gets down. So the entrance of it is close to the entrance of Scott Jim down in the lower left of the slide. And this is the um, site plan that was submitted. Now I will say the site plan that was submitted in the original package has gone through a couple of iterations. 
And this is the slide that you see on here in the revised plans that Carolyn has. Um, originally, the parking was closer than 10 feet to Belmont, and it's now been revised to, be, to meet the 10 foot setbacks. Excuse um, me, Rick. <coughs> did that reflect the second? Yes, slide. the plans in front of you should be the same ones that are up on the Correct. left because we, you guys got revised we got plans. The, second one, yeah. <coughs> uh, the building itself is the white uh, with the little lines inside it that look like rooms, which they are. Um, and the parking is in gray. There's a dark outline in the parking lot that you can see there that's a potential future building, which is one of the reasons we're pushing the building down, is to keep maximize the open space on the site so that we can put another building there if Smith so desires. The other option, the reason and rationale behind keeping the building down where it is tucked in the corner there between Mendenhall, the library, and Scott Gym, is to keep the entrance to the health services building in close proximity to, the, to Scott Gym. And we're students are working out and so on, trying to get it all to be complementary. Uh, let's see here. In the, some of the technical aspects of the site plan review. Um, curb cuts, we're minimizing the curb cuts. We're reusing the two existing curb cuts that were on the site. Sorry. Uh, we're separating out pedestrians, uh, bicycles, and vehicles. Uh, if you look at the left, the large gray building, Mendenhall, um, historically speaking, to get from Mendenhall or past Mendenhall from Belmont up to Scott Gym, you had to actually walk through the uh, loading zone of, of Mendenhall. And now what we're doing is providing a wide pedestrian path all the way from Belmont through to the entry area in front of Scott Gym, which is new. And in all cases, we're trying to separate uh, pedestrians and vehicular <coughs> orientation. Um, the other thing you'll notice here um, or may not notice, but is in existence, is that the current parking that you're seeing on this plan is less parking spaces that were currently existing. The existing lot had 30, or excuse me, 60 spaces assigned to it, and the current lot that you see here is 44 spaces. So it's a net drop of 16 spaces. However, um, there is a large parking count sheet that Carolyn has in the office right now. It has an excess number of spaces you have in front of you. Um, and this uses up some of those excess spaces, but there are still excess spaces remaining afterward. And, and Smith will be coming before you shortly with a conference center uh, proposal that will use up a few more. But there will still be excess after that. So practically speaking, the we have less parking now than we did before. But does the uh, requirements of the building necessitate more parking than is available, which would mean there would be overflow on the street and so forth? No. Uh, <coughs> It's a net zero change in the college use in general. Um, Not college use in general. This building specifically would it would it require more parking than the parking lot require than no. provides? No. no. Okay. So, um, and as you may know, this uh, lot also gets use from other people that park there. And Smith will be that all the Smith spaces are assigned, uh, and it will be no different in this lot also. Uh, yes. So while this lot is associated with this building, we can say it's going to be assigned, assigned yeah. to people in this building? Um, some spaces will be assigned to people in this building. Some spaces will be assigned to people that are in the library or in Mendenhall. Um, there will be reserved spaces for um, um, students or other people that are going to use the health services building. There's going to be two reserved spaces for physicians. There's going to be two reserved spaces for uh, uh, physical plant services, facility services. So there will be some, some of the ones will be assigned dedicated to the bill. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. That's why I wasn't quite. So, and then just to clarify a point in the application noted that the number of um, employees is not changing from the existing facility. So they're basically just moving the function from one place on the campus to another. And I think the application, the, uh, they proposed in the application or noted in the application that there had been five parking spaces allocated for where the current health services building is. So they didn't have a, it was, there wasn't a huge parking lot allocated just for this service in its existing condition, mm -hmm. in its current location. And also as um, with the rationale being that we have less parking here than we had previously, we're requesting a waiver of the traffic study. Um, let's see. Um, Planting, lighting. The next couple of plans are our layout plans, grading plans, and all the other plans that we normally put in your package. Um, as you can see down, uh, I'll go back a slide. 
At the bottom of the health services building, there's a new plaza there, an entry plaza. Uh, you see quite a bit of planting. Um, what we're doing is there's a lighter shade of green, and I'd use the pointer, but it doesn't quite show on the screen tonight. Um, uh, the lighter shade of green trees are existing trees that are all uh, very rare specimen trees, um, because Smith's campus, as you know, is a botanic garden. And those are being retained um, and going through extreme measures to protect them. Um, in addition to that, the new trees that you see on there are most of them are coming out of the Smith Nursery and also will be rare species. And so this is an, um, a continuation of the botanic garden through this area as well. Snow removal, there's plenty of green space next to the parking lot for snow removal. Uh, the, down at the bottom of this slide towards Scott Gym, there's another building there, 47 Belmont. Uh, there's a dumpster location at the end of the parking lot near there, which is screened by a complete um, solid wood fence. Um, lighting and signage will all match the normal Smith College campus standard. The benches will match the Smith College campus standard. Um, grading and drainage plan has been submitted to the DPW, and we do have a stormwater permit. Um, so it's been gone through in great detail. Um, but in general, there's less impervious area on the site now than there was when we started. Excuse me, that, that dumpster enclosure, does that service the 47 Belmont Ave building or the new building as well? Um, I can let Smith speak to it a little bit, but it's kind of an aggregate for Mendenhall, the library, it's the health services building. So there's no need specifically for a, a dumpster or a dumpster enclosure for the new facility? Um, no, there is, there's dumpsters there now on site in that parking lot, and they're not screened. And really what we're doing is taking the same size dumpsters and putting them behind the screen enclosure. Okay. So I guess I'm saying there's no, it, it doesn't show a dumpster adjacent to the new building. That's there correct. won't be an, a dump, the need for a dumpster next. Okay. That's correct. Okay. Let's see. The planting I, I touched on already. Uh, there are, are this, uh, enough or more actually street trees that are, that are required. The parking is actually screened from Belmont via a hedge uh, and all of the other things that you would normally look for in a planting plan. Uh, the species list is there, which you might enjoy reading because they're unusual in a planting plan because of the botanic nature of some of the choices. Uh, while we're on the planting plan, bike racks and benches? Any yep, uh, there's bike racks there. There's plenty of benches out in the plaza in front. Uh, in addition to the benches that are in the plaza in the front, that there's a tree in the center of the plaza that's a raised seat wall also. The plaza you're talking about, the bottom left. That curved? Yep. Yeah, curved area in front of the building. Uh, in addition to that, there's a uh, bike racks, which I have my pointer. The upper left-hand corner of Scott Gym, there's bike racks there. In addition to the bike racks right next to it, there's golf cart parking. Uh, as well. um, normal details, this is showing the, the large detail on the lower right, the wooden fence enclosure, some of the standard <coughs> details that we use on the Smith campus signage. All the signage, the, the bike rack is a Smith standard bike rack. It matches the other bike racks on campus. Same with the bench. Same with the signage. It'll all be the Smith College typical signage that you're used to seeing. Uh, this is stormwater management stuff, which DPW has gone over. Uh, one of the things that you might find interesting about this particular project is because some of the, the plant species are unusual species, we're going to be doing a lot of bare root planting, which is unusual. So if any of you get a chance to go over there, it's going to be an interesting endeavor to watch the plants being transplanted bare root. Um, the lighting plan conforms to Northampton standards. There's a minor bit of spillage into Belmont Avenue, but it's onto the public sidewalk, which we thought was beneficial. And the, the light standards themselves are the, the same standard Smith College lights that you see on the main part of campus. Um, these are some building elevations. and. Jacob Higginbottom from SGA Architects from Boston is here to talk about the building. And so there's one sheet of, of black and white elevations and there's some nice color renderings for you to see. And then Jacob, you want to speak for a little bit? Sure. Hi, my name is Jacob Higginbottom with Spagnolo Geisness Architects in Boston representing Smith College. Um, these are the full building elevations that we've evolved through um, meetings with, internally with Smith, um, material selection, the massing, uh, chosen to be contextual with Scott Jim, Mendenhall, and, and, and the neighboring uh, boundary, bounding edges of the, of the building. 
Um, the, the current building is uh, design has a 12 foot six floor to floor height, um, resulting in about a 25 foot high building. Mm -hmm. um, it masses up slightly at the entry to about 27 feet. You can see on the left there, it's um, right uh, before the, uh, the dome on Sage Hall. And um, it's broken down in um, components and textures to fit in with the very nature of the, of the surrounding buildings, Menon Hall, Scott Gym, Ford Hall across the street, and, um, and Sage Hall in the distance. The materials that, that are being used on the building are, are a mixture of, of brick, which you can see is the darker color, um, and a um, cement board uh, rain screen system, which um, is installed in a horizontal application, almost like a clapboard. And then there are um, hardwood accents above the windows. And this is an image of the front where I mentioned the height comes up a little bit to, um, to address the the pedestrian plaza um, in front of uh, Scott Jim. <coughs> the interior uh, of this stairway that connects, the first floor of the building is the traditional health services center, and the second floor is counseling, so counselor's offices, group, group counseling, and a wellness center. And uh, this stair connects the two, and it's lined with uh, that same hardwood that you see over the windows. Um, Sorry, I, I'm confused. Is this the, this is not the streetscape. This is facing into the campus? Yeah, if I go back to Rick's plan, um, that vantage point is at the bottom left of the screen. Yeah, standing right about there, looking at the entrance. So the street gets the other facade with the concrete and brick? That's it's not, it's, yeah. Right there. That's the view from Belmont. Mm -hmm. That's standing on the sidewalk at the corner of Belmont and Awaga Avenue. Mm -hmm. However, in this particular rendering, there's some planting missing in the foreground. Say again, Rick. There's some planting missing in the foreground, I'm trying to show off the buildings. We left some of the plants that would normally screen the cars off the rendering. So it's not it's not as to be mistaken as a cement uh, as it's concrete. It's um it's a fiberboard panel. It's uh, made from recycled materials and, uh, and, and, and held together with a cementitious material. And it comes in a two-tone, which you can see there. There's this variegated <coughs> nature to it. Um, it's a really attractive material. Uh, it's not a cement it's building. Such a discrepancy between the part that faces the campus and the part that faces the street. This is not the first time that we have seen this. It's not dry bit. No. no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> where we would save a lot of money. It's called Oko skin. It's made in Sweden. <coughs> I'm sorry, say again where this particular perspective is from? Street. It's right from Belmont. Standing on Belmont looking in. Gets the glass. This is the okay. skin. So you would be standing um, where Awaga Avenue meets Belmont? Right there. Right there. Right there. Okay. And I know this isn't part of the plan in front of you, but yeah, I don't know if Rick or somebody wants to speak to the fact that there may be a future building in that parking lot as well. So this may not be the final building elevation. Is um, that still? That's true. The, the whole concept of pushing the building down there is to reserve space in the future where that parking area is. So that as this campus densifies on this side of town, that there's the opportunity to put the build, another building there. So this may or may not right end up, up being visible from Belmont in the end. But for tonight's presentation, we'd prefer to just let it stand on its own merits because we don't know when another building may go there. Okay. The other thing I should probably say is that the, the building is being um, constructed and designed to lead standards. <coughs> you lead, expect. lead certification or, or uh, more than that? <coughs> uh, there's a goal it's on the project to lead silver. But we're going to design it to lead silver. Um, this last rendering is the area between Mendenhall Gym and the new building. The new building's on the right. Um, and it's the walkway that's the new walkway that's going to be happening in between Mendenhall and the building. The new building is. Oh, where? sorry. 
The new building's on the left. Mendenhall. Yeah. Hall. So it's Mendenhall on the right. Yeah. This is looking at it from the Belmont Street end down toward the, this, the new entry to the building down toward Scott Gym. Um, and back to the site plan itself. So that last view, um, um, go ahead and go to the next slide. Okay. Last view is up on the top. Up there. Yep, right. looking okay. down. That's correct. Okay. And now back to the site plan, and I'll open it up for questions. I'll just, I'll just add that DPW's comments are were just limited to some minor. I mean, we, we really sort of hashed through all the issues before they came before uh, in front of you, so really down to minor technical water line sizing and things like that, maybe five or six comments that don't need to be incorporated in any submission. You mentioned on with snow removal, there's plenty of green space. It doesn't seem to be a lot of green space. Well, there's not it's plenty of green space, but there's <coughs> enough, put it that way. Um, the area in front of those, um, the two lighter green trees, and there's a large area to the right of the, the new building itself that's grass. That there's, there's land in there. There's land at the end of the parking lot if you wanted to push straight toward the bottom of the screen as well. Um, and we feel that there's enough area to, to cover the snow load. I know that, yeah. you know, the two other well, very large buildings are already in place, but, I mean, if someone is traversing Belmont to Awaga, I mean, all they see are the backs of buildings and a parking lot. I mean, I understand that the other two can't be done anything done with, but, I mean, it, it, to take another building and put the back of it towards the public just seems... Um, actually, adding insult to injury. Since I've, I've been working on the project, I've been walking down there quite a bit. And you know, as you walk down Belmont <coughs> onto Awaga, that building that's in the upper right-hand part of this, the screen across the street mm -hmm. is actually fairly attractive. Um, and that, that's an empty corner lot on the corner of Awaga and Belmont with a really large tree in it. Um, it's, a, it's actually, and the tree that's um, being retained in our parking area, you see there's a bump out where we're mm -hmm. saving that tree. <clears throat> that's a huge London plane tree that's really beautiful. So, it, it, and actually when we add the um, hedging that's along through there, I think it should actually be a lot nicer looking than it is right now. Do you have an elevation of the, I don't know what end that is, the top side of the building? The far end, I don't yeah. think. Uh, Jacob, can you help me out with that one? Is that the east end? Uh, it would be in the bottom where it says east elevation. Yeah. So it continues the, the <coughs> design and then the paneling around the corner. Okay. We perceive the building to be seen from all sides, so all sides of the building are trying to look nice. And that on the east elevation, that, that, that panel system, that's proud of the brick? It is. 12 yeah. inches. It forms a shadow line. Okay. Any questions? There's a piece of the parking I don't understand, but I, um, and it's not really so much on this side of campus, but I, I, I sit on committees that continually talk about the problem on Elm Street and up Round Hill and, and all over. So to look at a point size six <laughs> that right. says that there's parking capacity on Smith just catches me off guard. And I don't think it's related <coughs> to this project, though. So I just, I. Well, I can give you a brief um, so background. When, when Ford Hall came forward um, is when we really looked at um, starting to um, annually, or whenever Smith made changes, look at the entire parking <coughs> count and the, the, the um, stock of parking for the campus. Uh -huh. So this is why there's, there's a spreadsheet. And we actually have a log in, in the office that's a, that first is, was associated with Ford Hall and that original condition said anytime you make add more than 10 parking spaces you got to come back to the planning board because we need to be continuing to track this parking so this log is adjusted a little bit um, the number it has stayed pretty much the same in terms of the numbers um, and then as part of this project Smith went back and phys I think from what I understand physically counted every single spot to make sure it was still there <laughs> or 
they didn't miss anything on the first time. They came up and found a few extra spaces that hadn't been originally calculated. They took some, swapped some around. And some changes have happened since Ford Hall and other parking lots where they've swapped out spaces here and there. So this was sort of recapturing that count and, and validating it. And, and um, so that's, this is a document, sort of a living document, if you will, of all the parking on campus. So um, there was a surplus, even from coming out of the Ford Hall um, conversation, because once Smith built the parking garage, that's what created the surplus. Okay. I don't know if that helps. It does. I mean, I don't know that I knew all that history. And, yeah. you know, this building staying in its same functionality with the same number of people. I was going to mention that, yeah, it's, yeah, you're not changing number of FTEs or students or anything else like that. What Smith is, in terms of the principle you're raising, is trying to make the campus, just like you're doing with the city, make it more dense and put whatever parking is on a periphery, but provide enough there to keep the cars out. That was one of the principles of the garage, which is where Smith got to the surplus, because they couldn't have done the Science Center without having done the garage to provide enough parking. So that you can come down the, the little street there and get to Ford Hall. But as Rick intimated, there's a project going to take place where the health center's building presently is. Um, that that's the end of Dryads Green in Kensington. It's residential. Check there. Right. And there's going to be, uh, Peter Gagnon from Smith is here, but that, that project is being, and Rick I think is doing the work, yeah. uh, with a lot of parking in it, again mm. on the periphery, mm. which at that location should take a lot of pressure off of those streets okay. uh, when that comes in. So I think you have a chance to look at that there. This is not adding any parking because just a replacement of use. That project um, will be focused on parking and locating parking at that spot. Maybe if it works really well for you, we'll take it as a lesson and do it in the city. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I just was chuckling when, when Rick was pointing out the, the, the bike racks and the rest of the stuff on all of the buildings. I'm saying Jim Lowenthal's right across the street, trust me. <laughs> we have plenty of bikes. Well, and I um, just, I, I, I think it's an old bruise about the, you know, looking at the butt end of the building. This one doesn't look that unpleasant to me, but that old bruise has festered in town. I mean, mm. I hear stories about it often. Yeah, I, I don't see this as a replay of the student center where the back end, that's why I was asking about the dumpsters no, and right. things like that. I don't, I don't, it doesn't read to me like that architecturally, but. No, not at all. It's, we've taken actually great pains to make sure it's gonna look nice from all sides. Functionally, how does the building work? Are there uh, daily deliveries? Is there a need for, is there a lot of traffic or, you know, uh, emergency access? ambulance if somebody turns an ankle at Scott Jim sure is this where they go that, for quick exactly. treatment and then they this is where they go kind of thing I, although it's really minor stuff yeah. only if something really nasty happens yeah. you go to the hospital period there's no overnight stays there's no mm -hmm. hand that stuff if somebody's injured enough that they need an ambulance you can see in the upper right hand side of the building there's a thing with a bump out into the parking lot that's an ambulance door so that an ambulance can pull into the parking lot take somebody away to the hospital quickly if they need to um, but it's really you know, as Jacob was saying, the second floor is all therapy and counseling. Um, and the goal is uh, very short-term visits. So. Okay. Any other questions from the board? It's, it's going to require redistribution of people that park there now. Yes, it will. But because again... you're going to add to the parking problem with this building, right? Um, no, we actually don't think we will because of the, the, the assigned spaces that Smith is using actually work pretty well. Um, and so, it, uh, This is much closer to the parking garage anyway, and there's usually a surplus in the garage. I mean, there's yeah, the garage is I was just you're going to mention that. Have, you're still going to have to change people's habits. That's yeah, right. right. Uh, Peter Gagnon, Smith College, um, Director of Capital Projects. Um, I was just going to say that just the, the other day, a couple weeks ago, I walked through the garage just my way back from having lunch, and there were 120 empty spaces on a Tuesday afternoon at 2 o'clock <coughs> with the students here, and, and I was just you know, surprised to see that many empty spaces. That's only a few blocks away, so hopefully it will yeah. Well, no, you'll probably see, in fact, I'm bringing two more projects before you in the, in the coming months that are not even in this part of campus. So all we're trying to do is, is campus 
Master planning license can't be specified on the side of town, trying to reserve as much space for future building as possible. <coughs> In the parking lot? Yes. Mm -hmm. Open up to the public, if anyone's here. Is anyone here from the public who wants to speak about this project? No? We're all watching the Red Sox. Uh, any comments or questions? I mean, architecture, I don't, I don't have an issue with it. Uh, functionally, I, I get it. It makes sense. The parking issue, I don't, I don't think it necessarily makes the issue worse. It just redistributes the, the problem. I think if, it, if the planning department is happy with the parking, then I seem to I would just move the parking department here. Second. Second. All in favor? Uh, any other comments? I mean, it seems it's pretty clean to me. That, that, that was the only issue was parking, and I don't. There, there, where this building is coming from, there's going to be more activity over there. There's going to be more parking issues, as you referenced, introduced over there. Um, and the, the count, there's 16 heavy or si the 16 spaces available within the campus. It may not necessarily be anywhere near this building, but somewhere on camp, which means people are going to be assigned different spaces and redistributed. But um, I, I'm, I'm a little bummed because that's my favorite, that parking lot is my favorite space to, to grab a space that nobody knows that even exists if not, if not paying attention on a <laughs> Friday night when my kids are running at Smith. So um, I'll have to find, I'll have to change my habits for a little bit. But, um, but I, I don't have a problem with it. Well, I'd like to move to approve site plan for 12,475 square foot Smith College Health <coughs> Service Building, 21 Belmont Avenue, Northampton. Map ID 31D-41, and there are no special conditions. Second. 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 All in favor? Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Clean for me, John. Right. It's special. Well, I have a question. Who uses the word nexus? In the, in, in the discussion of the marijuana law. That's a legal so like put the nexus in there. Yeah, that's a total. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, 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 that's land use law 101. It is? Yeah, case law. I thought the delicate We have two sets of minutes, I think, to two? approve. Oh, no, just one. Well, there's there two? one. I don't know what. Oh, and I'm sorry. That's page three and four of one minute. I got confused because the pages aren't numbered. Actually, they didn't get separated. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, there they are. Page three and four. Okay. I'm moving I have to be more careful about it. September 26, 2013. All in favor? <laughs> <laughs> I'm too tired to raise my hands. <laughs> I'll clean them up. Carolyn, was I right that you want to hear that one? Okay. Okay. Um, On the 26th? No, no, no. I erased it. There wasn't a time. Yeah, I fixed that. Okay. Uh, okay. Anything else? No. <laughs> One more motion. To adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. <laughs>